10 years, rock on the range. Yeah. How does it feel to be here? What's been what's been the feeling so far? The energy is outrageous it's been, this year. It's been crazy. Um, to I think we did 2012 was our first one, and you know it was big. It was growing. There was definitely excitement that we finally had festivals in America like we did in Europe. And now it's just you know growing and growing, and the fact that you have festivals all over America, and it's getting bigger, and you know you're having like. 40,000 people show up in Jacksonville, or you're having Wisconsin, 20, 30,000 people. It's, it proves that America is not dead for rock and, and metal. America is not dead for metal. Yeah. That, that is the word. Yes. That you heard it here first. It, 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 there's a lot of people. You know, anytime people say, well, who's listening to this? I just have to show them a picture of us playing to 40,000 people. It's nuts. So you guys are constantly writing. How important yes. is that to your creative process as artists? Um, I mean, it's pretty much like any skill. If you're not constantly practicing, if you're not constantly trying to write, you're never going to progress. You know, I feel like if you have any lulls in writing, it goes away very quickly. And I, probably like three albums ago, I made I made the conscious decision to, to always write when I come home off tour and never rest with that. Do you, does your writing change while you're on tour versus when you're home and you're settled? Is it, is it easier to write on on the road? Is it easier to write at home? I don't write on tour anymore. Uh, I, I was doing that for a bit, and then it, it sort of started getting really tiring, and sure. I didn't want to do it, and then it felt like work. And then I started seeing dudes like in dressing rooms with their headphones on. I'm like, this isn't fun. Like, we're supposed to be out here experiencing this, I, being out in the towns, hanging with people, doing fun things, and letting the experiences on tour come home with you and then you write you write about those if you're trying to just force writing on tour and then play a show in my opinion right. it's it's a little too much you mentioned paul i know he's a relatively new addition yeah. the response has been pretty positive in terms of hey, your fans great. he's great uh, how has the songwriting how's the working together been has it changed sort of your flow at all uh well we haven't written anything with him yet and um you know, when, coming into this, we pretty much said to him, like, you know, we've been doing this for a long time. We want to get a guy in here that's a, like a great permanent fit. We want to be done with this looking around for drummer stuff. And that's why we went and spent the time looking for guys and asking people we trusted for uh, referrals. Um, so we pretty much were like, you know, let's do this tour. Let's just have fun. Let's like gel, see if it works. But, you know, if we can take the way that we've been on stage into the writing, I think we could make some real special stuff together. And as a drummer and player, I could tell he's, you know, he, he's definitely a, a drummer's drummer. You know, he, he he knows that instrument very well, and he's like us with practice and, and the love for it. Um, and that's that's an important thing for us. I feel like everyone's always looking for the drummer. Huh? I feel like everyone's always looking for the drummer. Yeah, it's. Well, we're, all, we're still looking for the drummer some days when we're going on stage and he decides to go to the bathroom at the worst time. But uh, That happens often? Yeah, I mean, I just feel, I mean, no offense to drummers, but I feel like all the drummers I've ever played with have had some quirkiness to them. So I'm sure probably people think the same for bass players, but uh, that's just been my general vibe of drummers in general. I mean, I guess the stereotype about drummers is true then. Yeah, yeah, there's definitely some stereotypes. <laughs> So, you know, the vocal style has changed in the last couple years a little bit. Do you foresee it going back to the way that it was? How, how has the fan response been to the change? Well, with Matt, I mean, Matt's vocal changes have been just him practicing and working with vocal coaching and, and strengthening his voice. So I feel like a lot of the changes in his sound has been strengthening and preserving and you know I think of this new record it's the strongest his his melodic vocals have ever sound I mean we went into this record with I mean on one hand Matt wasn't able to scream for like two years because he was doing this bad technique that was ruining his throat he had to stop he had to relearn that and it took a while and on the other hand we decided you know let's make a record where we don't have to use that as a songwriting tool, what if we took that away? Can we still make a powerful record? Can we still make songs that are catchy? And uh, it was challenging. And for Matt, I mean, it all rested on his shoulders. Can you do it as a vocalist? And he had to really rehearse a lot. He had to practice a lot. I mean, when we were off tour, he was practicing like 
an hour or two every day, regardless of us playing or recording. So it came through on the record and now live when we do the new and old stuff. I mean, he sounds phenomenal. So the name of the game is commitment and hard work. Yeah, I mean, that's that's part of it. Because like when you get your lucky break, like we did, I mean, I don't think if we were working hard, you know, it wouldn't happen. You got to have both. You got to have the right time, right place, and you got to be committed and persistent. Hey, this is Paula from Trivium. Subscribe to Louder Noise, the loudest noise on earth.